Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro version 9 is now available for iOS. So today I want to talk to you guys about a few of the features, just a few of the features that this new version offers us, including all these shortcut buttons at the bottom of the screen, especially handy if you're on your iPhone, and the new analyzer, which also allows us to import files from iReal. So stick around and check it out, and also be on the lookout for all sorts of other videos where we talk about all of the new amazing features available to you in this new version of Mapping Total Harmony. So I want to show you these features today on the iPhone because I really, really think like these new features and these new shortcuts that we've implemented um, really enhance the iOS function on these iPhones. We're, obviously, it's going to be the same on the iPad, um, but you can imagine if we're doing this on this phone here and it looks this great, it's going to be that much easier on the tablet. So what do all these buttons down here do? So here we have Afternoon in Paris, just kind of randomly loaded here. We have the map, we got the chart. Um, this eyeball, we'll start from left to right here on this, this second row. This eyeball just merely shows me on the map, it's kind of a shortcut to uh, another sub menu uh, that we've created that lets you, you want to see all the chords in the current map or just the chords rel relevant to the song. There you go. There's that on off. Underneath our eyeball here, we have our function shortcut. So this just merely allows you to change the map from a chord view, the alphabetical designation of the chords here, to the functions of those chords. And I have quick access to that right there with just a little toggle. The F is our function button. Next to that, the, the map button. So I can hit that and get rid of the map altogether and just see the entire chart in the current view we have selected. We'll talk about how to change these views uh, in a second. Back up to the top uh, or the second row here, we have this player icon here. This is our shortcut to change the AI player from well, what is currently selected to whoever we want. Unless we want to change it to Herbie, we tap that to load. Now our playback AI player is going to have a slightly different take on the voicings and how to play them. Quick access to that. So our keyboard icon here is a nice little shortcut that lets us get to the instrumentation of a playback, whether I want to use a piano or a Rhodes, nylon guitar, what I want the bass to sound like, or which kit I'm going to use, the jazz or the standard kit. Very useful. Uh, here, the next button adjacent to that is our play along mixer. So this allows me to adjust the volume of any of the instruments or even the reverb within the playback. You can zero something out, you can dime something all the way up if you want, right there with that shortcut. Jumping back down to the third row here, this is our stage mode button. This is really useful if you're on stage or in a dark environment and uh, don't want don't want to strain your eyes or just don't want it obvious that you know, you're reading the, the thing or whatever. This is a really useful sort of feature here. Boom, back to light mode, stage mode. Uh, again, really handy. Let's talk about these next two buttons next to stage mode. I mentioned earlier how we could kind of change the way we're interfacing or the view of the current um, chart. And that's what these buttons over here allow you to do. They allow you to toggle back and forth between them. Here we have a view where we have the key, uh, the functional analysis present, the cadence detector, the arrows and arrows and brackets analysis and all the chords there. Um, if I toggle to the right, now I have a worksheet I can hand out to students and have them kind of fill in the blanks for us, and then we talk about it in our next lesson and see where they went right, where they went wrong. Next view is a more stripped down view. No more chord scales, no more analysis, no more arrows and brackets analysis. It's just kind of a straightforward, these are the chords, these are the order that you play them in, and this is the form of the song. So this is a view that might be more consistent with what you're used to on like iReal, which we'll also get to a little bit later where you don't, you don't have any uh, beats, uh, no staff. It's just the chord symbols within the measures. Also, I guess this is a good time to talk about this function over here, These this spacing shortcut here. This allows me to use the bar lines as a means of, of spacing everything or the chord symbols as a means of spacing everything. So if you got like, you look at here, this, uh, what is that, measure six, everything gets a little bit crowded there with those chord symbols, the D minor seven flat five and the G seven flat nine. Can merely fix that, boom, just by doing that. And remember, if you're doing this on an iPad, you even you have even that much more real estate uh, to play with. So this might be perfectly fine on your iPad. If you're on your iPhone, however, maybe you want to use 
this. So the versatility is built in to accommodate any situation that you're in on any device that you're using. On to the next view. So here you notice all the chord symbols, uh, it's just like a different version of what we were just looking at, but now all the chord symbols have been displaced down a little bit so that if you want to use our upper structure feature, there is now room to do so. So boom, now you see there's room for the original chord progression and the original harmony, and now our upper structures, the chordals, the triads, uh, this is a really handy feature as well. This next view here is kind of similar to one we already looked at, or it's just kind of like tighter spacing. So everything's kind of closer together if you want it to be uh, a little tighter for whatever reason. If you have a smaller, a larger chart, you want it all to fit on one screen without having to scroll up or down. And again, I still have this spacing shortcut over here I can futz with with any of these views, by the way. So if I want to make the bar lines equidistant, or if I want to make the chord symbols equidistant, I can still do that with this little toggle switch over here, the arrows. Next view. So now we have the, uh, I guess this was like, yeah, very similar to the first view we were looking at, right? So we have the functional analysis at the bottom, the arrows and brackets analysis, the chord symbols. And again, if you're trying to get everything on, on one screen, let's say it's a larger chart, doesn't really apply uh, to afternoon and pairs here, but you get what I'm saying. So this next view here, we got a rhythm slashes back, the chord symbols, but now some chord diagrams for our guitar player friends out there. This can be really, really handy if you, and just so you know, the, the voice letting is built into these, these voicings that are expressed on the chord diagram. So not only are you gonna get nice voicings, you're gonna get really good voice leading too, if you follow these chord diagrams. So again, here I can use the spacing feature to kind of make things uh, more legible. It's still kind of a tight fit though, which is why this button over here, uh, this little system break shortcut comes in handy. So now instead of four bars per line, I now have two. It's a little cleaner. It's a little easier to digest and understand. And I can still use the auto spacing feature here with the system break feature active also. So you can see how customizable the experience uh, can be with the app, how it's always really been, and now how easy it is to get to these, these with this, these shortcut buttons down here. So yeah, there's all these different views here you can kind of experiment with and see which one works for you in the situation that you're trying to use it in, whether it's performance on stage or you're just practicing at home or in a practice room. Let's go ahead and talk about this top row of buttons here where you can see where the tempo is, the number of repeats, the key, and the, uh, the playback groove here. Um, so let's press play here. So now if I want to change anything about those playback defaults, I can do that here. I can change the tempo. We can slow it down. Uh, I don't want to repeat it three times. I only want to repeat it twice. Um, I don't like the key. Let's play it up, uh, modulate it up a whole step there. And let's change the groove to, I don't know, bossa for whatever reason. I don't know. Don't ask. Uh, the next button I want to talk about is I really like my new iteration of Afternoon in Paris. Uh, I want to save all of those features that I just changed. That's where you use this little download into the box save button right here. So it's asking me, do you want to save all the current performance settings? I say yes. Now I have that ready to go uh, whenever I need it. So I mentioned iReal before. So let's talk about a really cool feature of Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is it's the analyzer. So we'll make more videos about this in the future, but you can basically plug in any chord progression that you want. The app will analyze it and tell you what's going on functionally, give you the chord, chord pairing, give you all sorts of analysis as it relates to the song. Why is this useful? Well, I can go to iReal now, take any of the songs in here, like this Night in Tunisia chart, which gives me some like basic information. This is serviceable. It's fine. It's great. But if I want to sort of unveil uh, some embedded information or really see what's happening here. Um, see the modulation, see the, the functional, uh, analysis of the song, see the chord chord scale pairings. And by virtue of that, maybe some tensions that are also available to us, all sorts of stuff, not to mention, 
uh, the superior playback that is available to you on Mapping Tunnel Harmony Pro. I can do that here. We share export chord chart, music XML. And I see here that Mapping Tunnel Harmony Pro is already showing up. If it's not showing up on your phone, just click on the more button there on the right and uh, you'll find it there. But we, you, we choose Mapping Tunnel Harmony Pro. There's the analyzer sort of uh, in its most default setting. I click on the analyze button. Analyze, it's analyzing and it's figuring out all the ins and outs of the song. Okay. And now, boom. Awesome. Look at that. So E flat seven is now E flat seven sharp 11. Why? It's the sub five. And as we all know, the sub fives chord scale pairing is Lydian flat seven. That gives us that sharp 11 tension, something that wasn't really there um, in the original chart. So Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is picking up on all these awesome subtleties. The functional analysis is there. We've added tensions when they're available. Not only that, check this out. In, in the B section, it's detected the key change, the modulation up a minor third. All these great little things that were embedded into the tune are now available to us. They're now obvious and we can take advantage of those when we create our lines, when we improvise, when we voice our chords, all sorts of stuff is now obvious to us. That might not have been so before. And again, not to mention the playback is way better. have it all the newest features available to you uh, for mapping tonal harmony pro if you don't have mapping tonal harmony pro yet you can check us out on the app store hope today's video was useful thanks for watching